Okay, what we're going to do in this video, and I've never seen done before, we're actually going to measure the power um, returned back to the system by the back EMF value. So we're going to um, see what the value of the back EMF is inside a motor, and we're going to do this accurately. So at the end of this video, which will be fairly long, so you might want to grab your popcorn and beer, um, we're going to be able to accurately determine as to what the back EMF value is inside this motor while it is running under various conditions. And this is how we're going to do this. We're first going to run the motor up uh, with no load. We have two meters here. Oops. One is reading our current and the other one is reading the voltage across the motor or supplied to the motor. Um, we have a large cap here and a small cap to smooth out any noise from the brushes. So we are doing it as accurately as we can and making sure that the meters are not going to try and read some sort of mess and make incorrect valuations of that voltage and current. We will be drawing from a battery and the battery will be kept topped up by the power supply um, so what we'll do is we will start the motor let it run for some time until it reaches a uh, steady state as far as current and voltage goes the battery will drop down a little when we first start it as we all know um, and then we're going to take some power measurements that being our current and voltage um, the engine RPMs will be monitored inside this clear coupling tube I have a flat permanent magnet I pushed in there with a north and a south of course running past this coil this coil will give us a frequency value on our scope and of course we will be writing that down as we go so the first test is just the motor running freely by itself um, should be the greatest amount of back EMF once it is up to running speed uh, being produced by that motor and so our power draw will be the least. Once we have those numbers we're then going to couple this motor back up to the unit and we are going to use that motor as a load um, by way of our big variable well, our wound resistor there or rheostat whatever you want to call them um, because we are only driving at around 12 and a half volts and this is a 24 volt motor um, we're going to also have current flowing into this motor from our power supply and the value of that current will be determined by our pot here and that will also determine the value of the load on this motor so we can take a um, few step loads from light down to reasonably heavy um, and do our power calculations as we're going and we will then have our watts in power um, with the PMs in the motor and then we can start the second part of the test the second part of the test we're going to find out what the actual back EMF value was and we're going to do that by removing the steel casing of the motor that has the permanent magnets in it and replacing it with this PVC casing that I've made the same size so there's no permanent magnets in it we're then going to drive this motor at the same frequency as before with this motor here and we will pull this motor down or we will reduce the RPMs to the same frequency as we did with every other test and we'll, as we were doing each um, RPM test we will once again write down the watts of power going into this rotor because it's no longer a motor um, we'll be seeing what the actual rotor itself consumes as it spins 
without the magnets. The difference between the two is going to give us our value of the back EMF um, that that motor had when the permanent magnets were in play. So I hope you understand that. Alright, so we can uh, go straight ahead and do our first part of the test now. And I'll let that run for a little while, come down to a settling voltage. And we'll see as it runs on, we can see the power supply is starting to deliver more current to our battery. And it will reach a stage where it will settle down quite nicely. At the moment our frequency is 37 hertz thereabouts. We're looking at this number here which is taking the average over 16 cycles, that's why it is steady. This one is taking, you know, I'm trying to calculate from every cycle, that's why that one jumps around a bit, this one does not. But you can see they're pretty much saying the same thing. Like I said, um, going to be a long video, but um, I've not seen anyone try to calculate the back EMF value um, of a DC motor under various load conditions. Of course now there's no load other than the uh, drag of the brushes and the resistance in the bearings. Okay, so we're pretty stable there. We're at 12.35 volts, 560 milliamps. And our frequency is 37 hertz, or about. I think that's going to be. Um, close enough to what we want to do. What I'm going to do now is switch the camera off, hook this one up um, and the circuit to go with it. We will bring um, we'll bring the current value up high enough as to get us back to our 37 Hertz um, which should make this the same thereabouts um, and then we can start our load testing from there by reducing the current going into this motor here um, and that will start to place a load on this motor here. We might do three or four different uh, measurements and um, then we'll switch over, rip this motor apart, rip the uh, steel housing magnets out, replace it with that PVC pipe and we'll run through our um, RPM range again right down our uh, power being consumed by our rotor and um, the difference between the two is going to give us our back EMF value. So uh, I'll be back shortly. Okay so our second motor has been run from this 24 volt bank um, with our adjustable um, resistor here which adjusts the current going into that motor. Adjust the uh, load on this motor here because as we reduce the current flow going into this motor, um, it will start to load this motor up here. Um, we are reasonably close to what we had before, really 12, uh, 550 milliamps. And the problem I've got here, doing it on the fly, these are slowly dropping down, of course. We should be able to get it reasonably 
time. Oh. Well, we have about our 560 milliamps, 12.32 volts, and the 12.35 there at 560 milliamps. Our frequency is once again 37.18. So um, now the motor is running extremely close to what it was without a load on it. Um, so the next thing to do is to reduce the current going into this motor so that it <coughs> starts to load this motor up. And we can take a couple more calculations on the fly. <coughs> we don't have to worry about the power going into this motor because it is just being seen as a load. Um, we can vary that load by adjusting the amount of current flowing through it. So we'll add a small load and we'll get that close to say 700 milliamps. things easy when we do our next test. Um, I'll just switch that over so we can get um, some fast measurements. As you see the frequency hasn't changed much, which we want it to do. So we'll load this motor up a bit more. Yes. 
starting point, but uh, we'll keep that first measurement. No problem there. Um, won't make any difference to what we're doing here. So now this is our load. This is our generator, and we can now place this under some severe loads. So we'll take it up to uh, close to 1.5 amps. Sorry about that light. Not much I can do with it. And finger in the screen. Seem like a big drop here, but it is a big drop in RPM and because this is reading for a second, of course, and RPM is per minute. So you can convert all that if you like. I'm not going to, I'm simply going to get back to those frequencies um, once we run this test again. Alright, so um, I'll go ahead and rip this motor apart, change it out for our uh, main magnets, and we're going to start all over again 
where this motor here will be running this one here at the desired RPM. So um, to give us the desired frequency, um, which we'll be looking for these ones here, and we can then um, have a look at what our motor is consuming, write them down, and uh, the difference between the two will give us our back end value. So we'll be back soon. Okay, so we're all set up ready to go. Um, I've left the cover off completely and just uh, screwed the two bearing carriers together. So we just don't need it. Spins nice and free in there, it's sitting in there reasonably well. Um, some changes we've had to make. We've had to put a thicker power wire in, a much heavier amp gauge than my uh, DMM, and um, you can see that one there. Close to zero now, and um, we have also doubled up on our negative lead. Now that we have a new positive, we we'll simply parallel the old positive with the negative to give us uh, twice the current capability, and you will see why shortly. When I started up, it's going to be over our 37 hertz at the moment because when we apply our um, battery lead to the positive and send the current through the rotor. Um, the magnetic fields produced by the rotor are no longer contained by the permanent magnets and uh, they are fairly large, they're grabbing onto our steel bolts and also we're getting extreme eddy currents and um, the likes in our two aluminium bearing carrier plates so it will bog down a little. We're not going to be able to do the accurate testing we wanted to do because I do not have the equipment here to do it because this, um, as it is now, is drawing far more current than I thought it would. Surprise, surprise. So, uh, but what we can do is get very close to our 37 hertz. Um, so we will be able to calculate the difference in this. I can't keep running it and dropping it down because it just gets too hot because of the current that's flowing through it. We will get an idea from our first measurement as to how much back EMF um, we are getting from our um, induced current through our coils from our permanent magnets. Alright, so um, I'm going to start it up and like I said it will be running faster but it will slow down when we apply. Um, Okay, so about 41 hertz now. I can only do this very quickly. Um, so it's going to be a quick on the fly measurement. It's going to be a, a roundabout guess on our um, current, because I can't use this, it has 10 amp limit. Um, and so you'll see why when I uh, connect the positive lead. Which we're going to do now. And um, 
if we uh, calculate those two, the difference between those two will be our back EMF value, which we will do shortly. But um, it is now extremely warm, and I know there is uh, a lot of air eddy currents being created on these aluminium plates because they are extremely warm as well. And it didn't really have enough time to travel through the shaft, through the bearings, and heat that plate up like that. So, um, far more current being drawn without the magnets than what I was expecting, um, which is uh, going to give us some indication as to what effects the magnets have and how much back EMF is being created so uh, we're going to work that in in watts of power so um, we'll be back directly to do that okay so um, with our magnets in place and the motor free spinning we're drawing 6.916 watts without the magnets in place um, running at around the same rpm it was drawing 180 watts um, so the back EMF value um, at that RPM, uh, which is indicating just freely running, um, the back EMF value is 173.88 watts. So uh, that is the amount of power that is flowing against our 180 watts, which brings that 180 watts back down. 6.916 watts so um, a very large deal of back EMF and of course we can um, between those two numbers there calculate the percentage um, of back EMF to that of our uh, input power so um, an extremely large difference with and without the magnets and that shows you um, the difference between the back EMF and um, our applied power to the motor. So there you go, it was much larger than I thought it was going to be, um, which has screwed us up for accurate measurements over a long period of time. Even if I had the equipment, this thing here would have toasted itself um, within a minute or two I would say the armature is looking very black in there already after that short run um, and there's just simply no way those little wires in there um, on the windings are going to cope with um, 16 amps of current running, running through them for very long so uh, there you go the permanent magnets have an extreme effect on uh, the current that motor draws. Of course, we knew it does affect the amount of current the motor draws, but who would have thought it was that much? 180 watts of power being drawn without the magnets. 6.916 watts of power being drawn with the magnets. So. Um, difference of 173.88 watts which is our back EMF value for that quick and not so accurate test but within the ballpark from what we can do here thanks for watching guys um, yes most unexpected but now we know now we know the um, difference having the magnets in place make to the uh, amount of power that motor draws. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next video.